Bing. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good people, and welcome to the Light Gauge Steel Trust Design with MWF Advanced Metal for Revit. My name is Matthew Londe. I am a senior product specialist here at Struxoft Solutions, and I will be taking us all through the brand new Truss engine uh, currently functioning in Revit. So for those of you online today who are familiar with Struxoft, with the MWF product, uh, things are going to look very familiar to you. Things are going to be a little very comfortable. And for those of you who are not, uh, let me give you a little bit of an intro. So Struxoft Solutions is the developer of the MWF products. So MWF stands for Metal Wood Framer, and is an, is, it's an extension that runs directly in the Revit environment. So MWF is capable of recognizing Revit walls, Revit floors, Revit windows, doors, openings, the roofs, you name it. And then we've automated the placement of framing elements directly in your Revit project. So we see a Revit wall type, we place our light gauge steel or wood panel directly in that wall. We see your floor, we put our floor cassettes directly in those floors. So this is all based off of user-defined criterias, which we'll kind of look at today when it comes to these trusses. Oops, there we go. So this allows us to actually model directly in the Revit environment, engineer with the advanced modules, which we're going to be taking a look at today, coordinate with other trades when it comes to HVAC, MEP, uh, structural elements. We have a clash detection engine that runs for the walls and floors. And then at the end of the day, we manufacture from our Revit project. So this is by either creating shop drawings, uh, CNC output, or project-wide cut lists. And because we are working within Revit, using Revit tools and families, we call them in Revit, for anybody who's not familiar with Revit today, we can extract all of that information. Uh, today when it comes to the trusses, we're going to look at the fabrication drawings and the engineering reports that are produced. So all that being said, this allows the MWF products to uh, really appeal to multiple types of users. So everyone from a home builder to a design build firm, specifically today we're going to be really targeting engineering firms, people who are you know, engineers using engineering tools. So here's a project which has been used with all of the MWF modules from the walls uh, right up all the way to the trusses. Again, I had mentioned that collaboration before, that uh, coordination with multiple trades quite a lot of built-in intelligence. Just wanted you guys to know that we do more than just trusses like you're going to see today. <sighs> Pardon me. So we are speaking today, we're all here to look at the light gauge steel truss or light gauge steel truss design. So we're going to kind of look at the, the new way that we've placed uh, trusses in our model. We're using an envelope-based system to hold places of trusses before our webbing is generated, our cords, and the engineering is calculated with the loads that we apply. So we're going to talk all about setting that up and, and looking at that in a, in a project. So I mentioned uh, before the ability to frame in multiple styles, whether it's light gauge steel or wood. And today we're definitely going to be talking about that MWF advanced metal. It's right in the middle there. And we can discuss you know, uh, extensions such as the CNC modules later. Uh, I just want to tell everybody that if you have any questions today, feel free to type them into the question portion of the GoToMeeting. It's in the little sidebar that you see there on the side of your screen. Uh, we have a couple of people uh, here in the office answering questions. If for some reason we don't have the time to get to your question today, or it will require more than a couple of lines of uh, typing, we'll definitely be back in touch with you, answering any questions fielding any concerns you guys may have. So without any further ado, I'm going to jump into the Revit environment. I have my Revit project right here. 
I've done really honestly nothing to set it up uh, for these, these trusses just besides setting up a couple of views, kind of cutting it down so it's a little bit easier for me. And the first thing I want to do today is open up the Structsoft Solutions tab. I can see all of the, the modules that I have here, the walls, the floors, and my trusses. So I'm going to pull the truss module out here into the uh, modeling space and get right to it. So I'm going to swing to the back of my building here. I'm going to open up the common truss view. That's what we're going to start with. But before I actually ever even create a truss, I want to set up some presets in this project. So right here I've got the preset button. It's just going to take a second to open up. And here we are. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up it's similar to a template, but it's also a predefined uh, set of criteria when it comes to things like uh, loads and my wind and my snow, and we're going to get to that in a minute. So here we are, we're in the general tab. I'm interested in specifying things such as my display units, my truss category, is it a floor truss or a roof truss? So we're going to talk about roofs today first. And then my truss type. So when it comes to light gauge steel, we see most commonly back-to-back. -back. We do have wall truss systems that we can use as well. We'll, we'll look at building some of those today. Uh, if, we're, if we were doing wood, we could select wood here. And if we had other custom type shapes, uh, unique bottom, you know, bottom cords, special families, uh, we could talk about putting that here into our other section. Let's start off you know, nice and simple, nice back-to-back -back trusses. Jumping down here, I can give my truss, uh, all of these trusses that are going to be created, I can give it a special name if I'm interested. I can put in my project here, so we can just call this something like Project X. I can specify the number of plies of every truss that are going to be created, so I know if one portion of my, my roof, it's all going to be double or triple ply, I can specify that right here. Heading over to the webbing tab, again, it's just additional criteria that the users can specify, such as the diagonals. Are they in tension? By default, this is how we set it. Are they going left to right for fan types? Are we looking at creating vertical onlys for gable end trusses? So I can create, I can specify that style in this preset. Now there's nothing stopping me from taking an existing truss that may be created at the end of a run, at the end of my building and it needs to be changed from you know, having diagonals to only having vertical members, I can make that change right here as well. My vertical positions, I can have them at equal intersections or fixed widths. Again, I just have a, the option to uh, have verticals at pitch breaks, uh, vertical at supports. So when we start actually creating these trusses, well, I'll specify, I'll talk a little bit more about these supports in a minute. And do I want to have verticals at point loads? Perhaps if I use a truss as a supporting member, such as a girder truss, I need to make sure I have vertical members everywhere I have a, a hanging truss. So I definitely want to make sure I have those verticals at a point load. So I have additional heel offsets. And then I have my top and bottom spacing on my, for my cords. Everything looks good here. I'm going to jump along to my member sizes. So here, uh, by default, we have brought in a list of members. So this is comes with the trust module. Everything is laid out before us. And you'll notice on the left here, I have the ability to specify a different member for my top cord, my bottom cord, my webbing, and my heels. But what you're seeing right here, it's a member selection, it's my available selections, but when it comes to engineering our trusses, this is a priority list. So you'll notice where it says filtered. These members are not capable of uh, being utilized for engineering at this point, so I'm going to remove them from my, my template. Here I don't need these big sizes. I'm going to concentrate on just a couple of different sizes today. We'll take two different, uh, let me go up a little bit more here, let me get rid of these guys. Delete all them. And Get rid of these guys too. Sorry there, bear with me for a second there, folks. We don't need all these guys. So 
I've narrowed down my uh, my available selection or my priority list to these six or seven sizes. Notice they're all true. They're able to be recognized by their trust designer. So as it runs through, it will apply the first member. If it fails, it will apply the next member, and so on through this list. Now I can, again, have a different priority list for, mem for members such as my top chords versus my bottom chords or versus my webbing. We're going to see this list again. Don't worry about it, folks, and we can make some changes once we get into our trust designer. So here we are in physical members. This is how elements of my truss are going to connect to each other. So my chords, uh, my pitch breaks, uh, I'm going to use a lapped type system. If Maybe it would be open if I was using something like a wall truss. Or... Uh, again, uh, just additional control on my webbing. If my members aren't square, I can add additional uh, material to them for uh, coping of these members. There's just an array of selection here. All right, we'll get down here to the designer preferences. Uh, once we get into our trust designer, uh, you'll be able to see these nodes and my line detection. It's just at how thick these lines are going to appear and be able to be selected. So this is just very visual, and we can make some modifications. You know what? Let's make our nodes a little bit smaller. Moving along, I get down to the engineering portion right here. That's why everyone's here today, I hope. And we can start specifying things such as, you'll notice right here, whether again we're looking at a roof or a floor, the truss spacing, so this will match what I use in my project very shortly. Here I can specify things such as my, uh, my top chord live, PSF versus dead, same thing for the bottom chord. Uh, is my top chord spacing uh, sheathed or purlins? So let's change this to sheathed. And then I have other load settings along the bottom. So I'm going to start in general, and we notice the building code I'm utilizing. So as time goes on and as we continue to, to develop this trust module, it's the fastest growing module right now here at Structsoft, we are going to continue to add in building codes. So currently, and today I'm going to be using the AISI 2012, but we're going to be inserting things like the Canadian code and uh, additional years and uh, European markets as well. So again, I specify table rules. They can be, uh, for my top and bottom chords, they can be separate or whole. I jump down here to my uh, CSI or my um, combined stress index, and tension and compression. I can modify this here. I have an, uh, for my analog model, I'm, I'm going to use a, rin, uh, a rigid slash pin uh, connection, so screws or connections versus a fully rigid if I was welding my trusses. And then I can specify my screw category. Moving on to my deflection, right here, again, I'm leaving it set to roof. I just need to specify my loads. So I'm going to use 120 here for a live load, 240 total. I'll cantilever to 90, and I'll put my webs at 90 as well. Again, so this is user defined into this preset. Again, once I start creating trusses in certain locations of my building, certain individual trusses, I can always modify special deflection, uh, snow or wind in certain portions. So if I open up wind right here, uh, again, everything's already set up for me. My exposure category is set to C. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, a building classification of one here, and I'm using the ASCE 710 code. Same applies to the snow. We can just say okay right there. Snow is very similar to the wind, and I want everyone to see right here the load combinations that are being used. So we're going to see a detailed load combination once we start engineering our trusses and we start seeing uh, our results and our uh, our reports being generated. So I'm going to close this down. I just mentioned the reports that are going to be generated. I'm going to go ahead and just I put I have a uh, engineering reports uh, folder I just created. It's 
empty so we can put it in there and we can see that I'm interested when I generate these reports in creating the fabrication drawing the engineering drawing as well as the uh, detailed engineering drawing or detailed report and I could fill in all this information with my company name and my address and my state and phone number and all that is as well so I've defined a preset I've created it I want to be able to use this preset on these trusses are we're going to start creating what are we call envelopes so when I generate these envelopes I want to be able to apply a preset to those envelopes or to a portion of my roof so let's save it let's just call it something like uh, it's a back-to-back -back truss just like this that's fine and our preset is built so I can say okay here oh yeah that's great no problem and again, I can create multiple presets. I can create a preset for a scissor truss condition. I can create a preset for a valley truss or a split cap. And we're going to look at creating those types of trusses in a little bit. But first, let's look at creating some, some envelopes and getting some trusses in here. So I'm grabbing my roof. I want to take a look at this Revit roof very quick. I notice I have a finish. I know I've got some shingles on there and I've put their thickness to 3 8 and underneath those shingles I have a 5 8 uh, sheathing or uh, particle board OSB whatever we want to call it and that's giving my roof a total thickness of a very nice one inch I can see that right here so this is very important for what I'm about to do because I want to be able to create my trusses accurately within our Revit model so Roof selected, hit the create button, and every time I go to create a truss, MWF is going to prompt me to select references from my project. It may be a supporting element, it may be the last truss that was created from a run, if I'm going from a common truss up into a, uh, a valley condition, so we'll see that again. But right now it's prompting me to select supports from my project. So we can sit on one of four things, or we can be we can support our trusses with one of four things. Walls, like I'm selecting, structural framing elements, such as the top cord of a panel, a an I beam or a structure, any kind of structural element. We can sit on model lines, just in case we're only interested in generating our roofs and our trusses. We don't have these walls, we don't have this much project. We can just draw a linear representation of our supports we can use those and the final element is other trusses and we're going to take a look at that option after so I've specified my two walls as support I say finish and I'm prompted to align the extent of my heel to a certain portion of my wall now these walls in Revit as we all know hope are very intelligent there is a structural layer an airspace a finish uh, an interior finish so we are automatically going to align our heels to the far edge of that structural layer because it's where my truss is likely going to sit if I needed to cantilever this truss in any direction positive or negative I can insert that value here now it's detected this wall so I can cantilever it on one side and not the other side if need be but I want to use the same kind of condition for the next wall so I can just say okay right here I'm brought back into the create envelope dialog box I notice right down here a model line appears and this is indicating the truss run so I know all of the trusses that are about to be generated are going to be created on this line now where do I want to start and end my trusses well that's the next criteria I can specify from my model so I have a linear option I have a face option and I have a numerical control now I can combine all three of them or two of them if I need so let's say face to start and I want to start my truss run with the well if I can just tab right here to the interior face of my roof I want to start right there and I can see that from the start of my line the point I selected was 5 inches and 9 sixteenths in. And now I want to end my truss run of somewhere over here within this hip. I can just say, you know, maybe right here. 
and I can see it's at seven foot six and five eighths. And you know, I say, you know what? I want a six foot pushback. So I just say six feet right here. Great. I jump over here to my spacing. I know that I have a two foot spacing. That's what I uh, specified in my engineering criteria. So that's what I'm going to put here as well. And my last option is offset from outer face. So when I showed us that roof before, I took a look at its thickness. I had the shingles. I had the sheathing. It was a nice even one inch. This is going to lower my truss one inch inside my roof and allow me to create it properly directly underneath all of those elements, the, sh the sheathing and the shingles, just right. And I also have the ability to add an additional truss at the end. So as I have started it almost six inches, or five and a half inches rather, into my line and gone all the way along at two feet, once I get to the end, if it doesn't land exactly six feet from the end, it'll shimmy an extra truss in there. But for today's sake of conversation, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to let MWF read the profile of this roof, see those hips, create those flat top trusses, or the envelopes for those trusses rather, and place them directly in my roof. So as I wait for the last couple of trusses to get generated here, I just want to remind everybody that if you do have any questions, I see a lot of people typing them. I don't actually see the questions. I can see people chatting, like the little thing popping up. If you have questions, type them into the uh, question portion. We have people answering questions. They'd be more than happy to answer your your questions for you. And again, if we run out of time or we don't get to your question, we will be in touch. All right, enough chat. Let's look at some envelopes that got created here. So I can see here, I've made them a little bit thicker than they usually get generated. I can see in my roof all of these common truss envelopes created as well as three flat top conditions down here. Now as I select a truss, I can see the uh, custom truss envelope name. So every truss that is identical will have the same uh, envelope name. And we're ready to keep going. Now, usually at this point, I'm going to jump into the truss designer. I just want to kind of show you guys how easy it is to go about uh, continuing to frame these roofs with these envelopes. And then we're going to talk about engineering these envelopes in a second. I want to kind of clean up this hip end right here. Uh, prior to this version of the software, if anyone is familiar with it, I would I used to have to do one side of the roof at a time, so I'd have to handle this little hip here in this section, and then the other side, and then do my perpendicular jack trusses. But not anymore, because now we have the ability to just frame the entire hip end. And you'll also notice here, just so we can kind of explore the rest of the uh, commands and tools, I have the ability to do valley trusses, hips, ridge and parallel jack trusses, or just ridge trusses. But I want to come down here to the hip end. And again, I'm prompted to select references from my model. So first things first, my hip lines. We can take a little zoom in here. I want to hit the, make sure I'm grabbing the same lines, the top ones. I could select the bottom line and not worry about that offset from my outer face, but I like to show off that feature a little bit. So it's prompting me to select a side support right here, a side support on the other side, as well as my end support. So this is just allowing me to, you know, as we saw before, specify the extent of my heel on this, on the envelope that's about to be generated. Now last truss, I want to talk about this real quick. Once I select this element here, this truss envelope, it's going to convert it into a girder truss. And we're going to be able to see when we take this truss into the truss designer, everywhere a member is hanging from this truss. So we grab it, perfect, we're good to go. We just fill in some criteria here, again, our spacing, minimum length, that's going to be the minimum height of the uh, little jack trusses that get generated, I'm going to say two. I have a detail tolerance. This is actually going to uh, create a small gap in between these trusses for uh, connection details. So I'm going to just say here, quick two inches, it'll, we'll be able to see it. 
uh, an offset from my girder, so I'm going to leave it one foot to start my spacing from there. I could keep it two feet if needed be. Again, I'm going to put my one inch uh, offset from my outer face, and I have a setback option here. I uh, would push my heel in, uh, more often used in the uh, wood industry for, again, connection details. So I'm going to say OK, and again, very quickly, my little uh, hip trusses are generated, my half trusses, there they go. And then the rest of my jack trusses created, generated. There they go. Just like that. Perfect. Get some Revit errors or warnings up there. Tells me these guys are a little bit close together. I take a look. I say, you know what? I don't need these guys. I can just delete them. Need be. Perfect. So I've got some envelopes created. I'm ready to actually engineer this guy right here. Let's take our truss envelope. We say create again, same create we used before, and I'm taken into the create truss dialog box yet again. So this is, again, the same dialog box we saw when we were creating our presets. So I don't want to have to go through there again and specify my presets. I can just say back-to-back -back truss, it brings in my project name. I can see it just flipped there. All of my member sizes, all of my loading conditions and my engineering button are right here. And along the bottom, you'll notice now that it's actually been enabled. It was grayed out before. I have the ability to, to take this truss into an interactive mode. Definitely want you guys to see that. I have the ability to web on launch. I don't want you guys to see that just yet. And I have the replicate identical. Now. I've got a lot to show you guys today, and I showed you before that this truss I have selected is CT009, and we have a couple of instances. I don't want to engineer every single one of these trusses uh, and have them created, just for sake of speed today. So I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to take myself into the truss designer, and here we go. So we are still in Revit. We're just kind of in a different dialog box. I'm going to make this screen here, full screen, just because it's easier to see everything. And there we go. There is our truss envelope. I can see uh, my supports underneath it. We'll talk about those supports again in a minute. But what the user has at this point is the ability to automatically generate the webbing within my envelope. So all of my members are brought in. I can see my diagonals and my king studs and my, my vertical members, king posts. And here the user can still specify elements. They can select a diagonal bracing by hitting the space bar. You'll be able to hear me hit it. My diagonal member rotates or changes orientation, connects to the other uh, pin uh, nodes. Sorry, these are those nodes I mentioned before. We made them a little bit smaller. Again, if I want to change anything at this point, I can go back into my settings and I can do something like Oh, I don't know, turn off the origin. So I have an origin here. It's very hard to see it. Anyways, I can turn it off. It makes it easier to select elements. Just like that, my origin is gone. So at this point, I'm ready to, almost ready to engineer this truss. The user has the ability to change from a model line view to something like a physical model. So now I can see exactly what my truss will look like once generated. I can see the analysis view. So these are all my analysis lines of these members. I can see now my supports. I have a, a rigid or a pinned and a rolled condition over here. And I can add additional supports if need be. So if I knew I had a, a supporting member underneath here, I could add that. We'll look at that in a second. Here's a combination of those two. So I'm going to leave it in this view for a second. Because when I come over here to the engineering dropdown, I have the ability to display my loads. Now these loads aren't going to be to, to scale. So if I said I want to see my dead load, my live load, and uh, my wind, these aren't to scale. It's not showing the actual force. It's representative. So I know that these loads are here and they're being placed. So I can turn these off here in a second. There we go. And I can say model lines. And again, I can select, we'll take, a note, we'll take note 8 here. And I hit enter. 
and I can add an, an additional point load onto point eight, and I'd be able to see the deflection if I had something on there. Uh, let's just engineer this truss first. We'll look at adding some point loads and some additional supports after. So the first thing I want to do today is, and you'll actually notice along the top here, I'm in my truss designer. Uh, I've said to only do this one, so it says quantity one. Had I said replicate identical, it would tell me exactly how many identical trusses I have, and I'm not analyzed. So let's analyze this truss. Now from that, excuse me, from that priority list that I had specified, I said I had all those 362 members, and then I went into the six inch members after that. It is going to analyze it with the members that I've said, so just that first 362, and I can see that it has failed. So I can also go like this, view, go back into my, uh, use my physical and analysis view, and I can actually see what is failing within this truss. So I know both my top cords in this case have failed. I can actually generate the reports of this failed truss, and I can see things such as the, uh, you know, the members where they're failing. And well, we're going to look at, you know, what it's actually a little more interesting to see the, uh, the diagram of the of the failed trusses. So we're going to look at the diagrams here. This is going to be uh, very technical. It's uh, much more technical than I am when it comes to these things. So let me make it a little bit bigger. So I can see these are, this is the uh, detailed load combination. So every condition here, so I can see all my moments, I can see everything that's being used. You notice I can see my, uh, here if we say deflection, I can see my deflection. And I, I said before, if I'd had that point load, I'd be able to very easily see. I can see an envelope. This is all of the loads together. If we go to a moment here, we'll to actually see everything. And if I'm curious about a specific point within my truss, I can say show details. And I can, if I zoom in right here, we can grab any point along my top quarter right here, double click, and all of the additional information about this point comes up. So you'll notice I have here, I have no lateral bracing being used. Uh, it's not capped. I can see the section that was the 362S162. So he's kind of small for the load I was trying to use. And I can see all of the uh, detailed combinations there. There's my uh, combined stress index right here. So all of this information is provided for me. We can close this down. And now I want to design this truss. So now it's going to run through my member priority list find the first member that can be used and bring that into my project and place it right here in my trust designer. So it's going to take a quick second. He's just running through the top cords, through the webs, through the heels, my bottom cord. Go. Again, uh, as you guys are watching, any questions, again, please feel free to type them in. We're going to be answering them. Oh, there we go. So he's done. I can see my analysis is now passed. And I can see that my members are obviously a little bit deeper. So it's taken my top cords, my, uh, no, just my top cords, that six inch member. So I can now generate the reports. And we'll take a, a little more detailed look at this. So let's make this full screen. And let's talk about the fabrication report. So my material design is passed. If we zoom in here. Right up at the top, I again, I have all of my my truss type. There is my back-to-back -back truss. I called it Project X. There's only one. It's a one-ply. It would say you know, 10 or 19 or however many I have in here. Head down here. I can see all of those little circles or the numbers with the circles in it. That is my screw count at that connection. So we head down here, I can see the members being used for my top cords versus my bottom cords and my heel and my webs. Very straightforward, nice and easy to see right here, design, material design passed. Let's head over to the detailed engineering report. Again, nice little drawing of my truss for me right there. 
I can head down here, I can see the reaction from all the loads and combinations. I can see the uh, material and bracing, had I had bracing used as well, my, I'm actually unbraced here in my webs. We have a bracing option in my webs. And then lastly, let's just jump into the engineering report. This is a, uh, a summary, it's a report summary of all of my loads and my conditions. This report right here, ready to be stamped. Pretty straightforward, nice, clean, neat, ready to go. So we can just close this down. Again, we'll say OK here. And it is going to bring those physical members into my Revit model. Well, it's going to ask me to rename him. And in he goes, just like that. So he's actually placed that one inch right below my Revit roof line. And had I used the create, again, we'll just take his neighbor right here, done replicate identical, it would have done every truss from that row. So let's cancel that. And I want to just grab uh, this guy right here, my, uh, my girder truss. I said we were going to talk about that in a second. So I want to hit create. Again, let's use my back-to-back uh, -back condition. I don't mind if he's replicating it identically right now. And I can see along my bottom cord, I can see every node that is automatically generated. Let me center this, much easier to see. I know a vertical member is going to be placed there. So now when I generate the web, it may not necessarily uh, respect my, uh, my six foot top and bottom cord spacing, but I need to have these additional members. Now if for any reason there's a member in here I don't need, such as these diagonals here and here, they may be a little bit close, I can simply select those members. Oh, we got a diagonal there. There's some overlapping guys. And I can just delete them out. Just like that real quick, they're gone. At this point, I'm ready to, again, engineer this truss, perform that analysis. It'll tell me if it'll pass or fail, and then design it. Need be, I can design it right away first as well. So we've seen that happen. I want to really just kind of talk about getting as many types of uh, trusses in here. You can see how quick it goes. So just like that, my truss is created right in my project. Perfect. Again, this whole side of the roof would be framed in just you know a minute or two by saying replicate identical. Let me just do this here. We can. I'll show you the the sheer speed of it. I am running in 2017, so uh, there are quite a bit. Just in Revit alone, there are quite a few speed improvements. Uh, coupled in with the uh, speed improvements that we've built into the MWF modules, uh, you're having you'll see right here. Just like that, perfect. All of those uh, jack trusses created. So I'm going to switch views for a second. Right here, let me bring these guys. Talking about, oh, it looks like we're in the front of my building. I've got some envelopes already created. Oh, you can just talk about these big ones right here. So I have CT005, he's all the same truss type. And let's take a look, oh, I've got a valley here that's not framed. So you know what, let's go ahead and frame out this valley set first. So I just gotta grab some valley trusses. Again, it's prompting me to select references from my project. So main ridge lines, valley lines, those, uh, the last truss, I'm just, oops, see that's not gonna work. There you go. The last truss, that'll be this guy right here. And I have optional supports, I don't need to specify that. So let's just uh, kind of try to speed things up a little bit here. I don't want to take up everyone's uh, whole day. But you'll notice I have the ability to stub my trusses as well. Let's just say OK right here. And I'm stubbing them at six inches. Uh, there we go. So I've created these two. We'll come back and we'll talk about those guys in a second. Let's grab these guys, CT005 in the front. I want to edit the instance. And I want to create a scissor truss out of these common truss envelopes that I've already created. Obviously I used those two I-beams as supports. So let's just say scissor right here and it's prompting me for an elevation. I'll say two foot six. Just something a little bit different. And I want to apply 
to all instances of the same group. So it looks for all those CT005s, breaks my bottom cord right in the middle. Let's open it up. Let's grab this guy right here, say create. We'll set it to back to back for a second. Generate my webs and I can see my members. Now I've said, you know what? I actually want to create a wall truss out of these scissor trusses. So I can say instead of using back to back, use the wall truss. And now when I say OK, instead of placing these members in the back to back type criteria, it creates it in a wall type orientation. Just in case we have people out there who do one versus the other or both or mix and match like I'm kind of doing here, we have that control, we have that flexibility. So again, I can select multiple envelopes. I can grab these two guys right here, say create. From these scissor trusses I created before, I could create a preset. Let's keep them uh, wall trusses. I'm okay with that. I'll just generate those webs. I can see I definitely don't need this guy or this guy. I mentioned this before when we started looking at those nodes and adding loads to these members. I can also select an element. So I can actually do this. Let's take go back into our member sizes. We're going to say everybody in this truss is going to be a 250S125 small truss. We'll just generate my web. But I know for one reason or another that my king post is actually a 362. It would have to be back to back in this instance. But I can make that modification to any single instance or any single member of my truss. I can override it so I'm not restricted to what MWF has laid out before us. So we always have that, that flexibility and that control. I'll do the one, the first, yeah, that's okay. Always just too close together. And then the second guy there, you can get those guys gone and gone. Perfect, just like that, both my trusses are generated. Oops. So we've got some valleys, some scissor trusses. Really want you guys to see something else here. Uh, split cap, so uh, piggyback trusses, they're sometimes called. But I want to kind of concentrate on this corner of the roof right here where it's a little more unique, it's a little less cookie cutter. And you'll notice I have one of the, my fine magenta trusses here. I want to select this roof. Again, I want to say create. I'm interested in creating some new, uh, some new envelopes, something a little more interesting looking. I'm prompted for the supports the wall, and let's take this magenta truss. When I say OK, it's now telling me that a custom truss input is about to be generated, and it wants to know the truss ply width, or the ply of this truss. Is it going to be doubled or tripled? Do I need to add an offset between them? If I'm OK with what's there and I'll let the uh, engineering handle it, I can just say OK. And again, my wall, it's prompting me for a cantilever offset. I'm fine with zero. So just like that, my model line appears. And if I just say, you know what, just start two feet from the in from the end, and let's stop in line with the interface of this wall at two feet with my one inch offset from the outer face. Say okay, it now creates these more unique style trusses. So we're not, you know, restricted to grab this guy right here. We're not restricted to those common trusses with, you know, just one slope on each side. I'll use my back to back instance for this guy too. So just like that I have a more unique style truss. When I generate the web I can see where all of my members are created and as I said before I can make any kind of modification I need to certain horizontal, vertical members. I can say okay and that truss is generated within my project, just like that. Perfect. So let's talk about these guys over here. Let's just grab this one right now. Again, I want to edit an instance. I want to split this cap and I'm given a 
couple of uh, control options here. So the height of my lower truss, I can say something like four feet. I have a gap between the trusses in case I wanted to add something uh, like a, uh, a capped condition, I can put that on here. I'll just put one inch so it's very easy for us to see. And I can stub the caps as well if I wanted to uh, push my trusses or the, the heels in a bit. I'm just going to say OK real quick and generate. There we go. My split cap conditions. So let's just grab these two guys right here. I can see them nice and easy. My two envelopes. Again, it's a flat top condition, just like we saw before. And these are handled very similar to those valleys. But it's a nice way to quickly split these trusses, piggyback, split caps, whatever we want to call them. Great. I'm going to keep going, guys. Got a few more things I want to show you today. Specifically, the what we like to call the oddball trusses. So there are going to come times in projects where we have unique shaped roofs uh, that maybe there are multiple roofs that are uh, joined together. Maybe they're just two linear faces. Uh, maybe I don't even have a roof. So I've got a strange kind of condition here in the top of my model. I can go to thin lines here. I want to just go into Revit. I want to just grab a model line. I know that just from setting up my project here, I'm going to use grid line W. And I'm going to start drawing lines. I'm going to draw out my desired truss profile. And we're going to come down here and we're going to go all the way up to my ridge. I'm going to swing all the way down to this guy right. Oh, come on. There, we'll even leave a bit of an overhang. We'll just say five. That's good. Just like that. Now let's hide some of these things. We don't need this guy or this guy anymore, or this guy for that matter. I can see my truss right here. I can. Oh, that's fine. We don't need. Not to worry. I'm going to grab all of the lines I just drew, and I'm going to create a group. So this is just a plain old Revit group. We're going to call it uh, custom truss. Just like that, all of my members are grouped together. We're going to treat this group like any other envelope that we've been um, looking at in the truss designer. I say create. Again, I'm brought into the create truss. Let's use our back-to-back -back truss system. Say OK. And here's my guy. Now the only thing I need to do here first is uh, identify what these lines are. Because I drew them with virtually no intelligence, if I select this line and hit enter, I can see that it's considered an oddball. So I would need to change it to a top track. Now luckily for me, I can select these lines. I can use the shortcut keys that have been provided for us by hitting T for top track, H for heel, B for bottom track, V for vertical, another B for bottom track, another H for heel. I can generate that web. I can engineer this truss one more time. If you know what, actually I don't need this guy right here. I can say OK. And those members are brought into my project back to back. Nice custom truss label right there lets me know exactly who he is. And I can copy this member as need be, array it for whatever case I'm good to go. Finally, I wanted to show you guys the uh, floor trusses. So if anybody out there is familiar with the MWF Pro Floor module, uh, what we've done is we've integrated uh, both systems into one. So users can, let me put this guy away for a second, use the pro floors to create their, within a Revit floor element, they create a very large cassette. They can separate it and they can break it into smaller, more realistic sizes. So you'll notice I have one very large Revit floor element, but it houses three different panels. I just haven't generated my members here. So if I open the properties of this floor panel, the user is able to see things like, well, if I say Joyce, I can control, again, 
very similar. I control things, pardon me, like the spacing, uh, the truss depth, my webbing elements, again, my member sizes. So all of that information, which we get from the truss module, is brought into the floors, and they're integrated into one, and again, I can engineer these, these floor panels or these floor cassettes. So what I've got open here, folks, the last thing I want to show you today is my finished model. So this is the exact same project I've been working in prior to this. I just, you know, I'd done some custom trusses here, kind of deep, very interesting looking. I have done all the hip ends. I've done all the valleys, all the scissor trusses in the front here. So most of these trusses are engineered, yes. Uh, some of them are not just because I, as I go through, I'm just creating trusses. I want you guys to see how quick it is. We'd seen all the engineering aspects. But to create something of this size, uh, it is a very quick, quick process. I just wanted to show you guys in kind of real time. I have a bit of a time lapse here. So with all of these envelopes, I think there was something like 220 or something. In 11 minutes, I took a roof that had just all these envelopes, and created, so here are 10 minutes and 47 seconds, and I had created all of these, this roof, all of these trusses, just like that. So it's quite a quick process. Uh, it's really just, as I mentioned before, selecting those elements, those supports, those ridge lines, those uh, valley lines or hips from our model, and our envelopes are created. The more experience we have in this model, or with these models and setting up these presets uh, when it comes to things like our engineering preferences we're good to go and the other option we have so we again it's similar to how the walls and the floors works these presets can be exported and then imported as well so I have trust settings here I can just bring them in and there's my scissor and valley set in this in this folder so I can just as a quick example import export and not have to worry about creating all of these different loads and presets in every project. So I just want everybody to know that uh, today's session has been recorded. So we're going to send out a recording of today's webinar. I um, just want to thank everybody for coming out today, uh, taking the time almost an hour to just watch me engineer some trusses, create some you know, cool looking elements here in my project. Uh, if for any reason uh, you've asked some questions and we haven't had a chance to get to them, we're going to be sending out emails and we really look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, we're very excited about this trust module. So I'd just like to thank everybody. Have a great day, good people.